Finding a cancerous lump in her breast seven weeks after a clean mammogram was terrifying for race announcer and fitness expert Fitz Kohler. Hello and welcome to Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. So excited to bring you a very special guest today, Fitz Kohler. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm thrilled to be here, Robin. Thank you for having me. There's so many, uh, your bio is just so long. <laughs> you do right, so many yeah. things. Just give us a quick overview of all that you do. Uh, you know, I'm a highly qualified fitness expert. I have a master's in exercise sports sciences. I've been teaching around the world for 30 years, and I do that in uh, only large scale ways. So I um, do TV, radio, books, magazines. I host a large uh, I host a broadcast show myself, The Fitness Show. I, I teach you corporate speaking. And uh, of course, I, I work in the running industry. And so most weekends of the year, I am at the start and finish line of some of the most uh, iconic and incredible running events. And I'm so, I'm so blessed to work with such wonderful people all the time. You are amazing. You have done so many wonderful things, but not that long ago you right. were diagnosed with breast cancer and that just had to just throw everything off. You know, you're doing great. Things are going well. You're a mom, you're doing terrific. Tell us about that journey, how it all happened and, and, and let us, and we want to talk about your book as well. Yeah. So you're right. It, uh, threw my life into spin cycle. It's incredible yeah. what that one moment, uh, will do, but long story short, I had been a huge advocate for annual and self exams for my entire career, my life. And I went in for my annual mammogram in late December of 2018, walked out with a clean bill of health, clean scams. And less than seven weeks later, I was at a race weekend where I came out of the shower naked and I just kind of rubbed my under boob. Now I do self exams. I wasn't doing an exam at that time. I just happened, I had an itch, thank goodness. And I yeah. rubbed my under boob and there it was. I thought, oh my God, it's there. It felt like a bean, like a black bean. And um, it did not belong. And so, you know, pivotal moment number one is I didn't ignore it. I didn't call my mom or my friends and cry. I didn't Google it. I just picked up the phone instantly, called my gynecologist and said, hey, I found a lump. Can you get me in? And thankfully I did because I had a very aggressive, fast moving type of um, breast cancer. I, it was within just a few days I saw the doctor and then uh, so that was a Thursday I found the lump. The next Thursday I was getting the ultrasound and mammogram and they said, yeah, we're concerned about that lump, but you also have three hard swollen lymph nodes, which meant that it spread. And I, I was able to compartmentalize my feelings until I got in there. But at that point, you know, I thought, oh, damn it, I'm definitely going to die. I thought, you know, I have the perfect family, the perfect career. I'm, you know, I'm the beacon of health and happiness. Yes. Of course I'm going to make the perfect tale of tragedy. So you know, the, the fear, it was, it was oh. so very stressful. And, um, within a few days, I, well, I had had the punch biopsies and then my surgeon called to say, yeah, sorry, Fitz, it is breast cancer. We're going to figure out exactly what type and we're going to move forward. And, um, yeah, it was, it was absolutely terrifying, but I, I did some great homework and I found what's considered to be the A team and Gainesville, Florida is a Mecca for medical professionals. We have everything here, um, but I found the best. I found the best oncologist, the best radiologist, the best surgeon. And that really made a difference for me because I was putting my life in their hands and, and things unfolded in a pretty crazy way after that. You had radiation, you had chemotherapy, but all during that time, you continued to announce racing, which is unbelievable to me. How did, how did you do it? Yeah. So, um, you're right. I had 15 months of chemo. I had 33 rounds of radiation and then I had some surgery in between there, but from the get go, before I even, before they dripped one drop of nasty stuff into my body, what I decided right away is I wasn't going to be cancer's victim and uh, I would be the victor. I don't do the victim mentality. I just don't identify with people who like to be like, oh, pray for me. I sprained my ankle. And I think really this is what <laughs> you're stuck up the prayers on. Um, so I, I just decided, no, I wasn't going to wear ribbons. I wasn't going to wear pink. Oh, well, no, I did wear pink, no ribbons. I never wore like breast cancer warrior on my shirt. I just decided that I was going to continue being me and figure it out. I wasn't going to miss out on time with my kids. If they had a game, a graduation, a show, I was going to be there. And then I also wasn't giving up my career that I had worked so hard for it. And it was those passions 
that really kept me afloat. And I was beaten down. I was so violently ill. It was crazy how sick I was, but how fortunate for me to have these people and this profession that I adore, that I was willing um, to do whatever it took to get there. And, and that's really where some of the big adventures took place was on the road with breast cancer. That is amazing. I'm sure people listening who have gone through this are saying, wow, how did she do that? Because I know it can, I, my mother had breast cancer, I've had friends and it, and it's, it's devastating and it can really tire you out, wear you out, make you sick. And I, I just can't, I have to tell you, God bless that you were able to do that. And you actually wrote about it. My noisy cancer comeback is the name of your book. There it is. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, tell us about the book and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, so the book is an uplifting, fun tale of adventures and misadventures while enduring the cure. Uh, there's a few things that inspired me to write it. Is Number one, once I started going through treatment, I started thinking, how come nobody ever tells you about this stuff? So they warned you, hey, you might be sick, you might be tired, you might be bald, and I was all of those things. But nobody told me about the very weird stuff. So yes, I lost my hair and I had, I had decided early on, no wigs for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, and you're so beautiful and you're long, beautiful blonde hair and you look beautiful without your hair too, I have to say. Well, <laughs> thank you. And my hair of course fell out in grand fashion on a finish line stage at the Los Angeles Marathon. Oh I mean, the whole thing was chaos. But once I shaved my head, it wasn't just baldness I was dealing with. I had worn a center part for years I had a tan line running down the top of my head. I'm a Floridian. So I had a skunk stripe on oh. my whole bald experience. And then I had rashes from the chemo. And so even when I had the courage to go out bald, I had ogre bumps on my head. I was like, I look like an ogre because I got little rash bumps in oh my the gosh. skunk stripe. And then my nostril hair was gone. And so you lose all your hair, but um, yeah, I just thought I had allergies and I was on a stage with little balls of tissues everywhere. And one of my runners came over and she said, how are you doing? And, and I had chosen, I had to tell people that I had breast cancer, but I didn't have to tell people that I felt bad. I just, I kept all the gory details to myself at the time, but she came over and she said, uh, how's it going? And I said, oh, I just have allergies. And she goes, you don't have allergies. I said, yeah, I do. She goes, no, you don't have any nostril hair. And I went, <gasps> Oh my what? gosh, right? And it didn't just run, it fell out like a faucet. Oh. So there was all sorts of crazy, not so you wouldn't believe it stuff that happened. And then of course I was doing it all on the road. I would land in California or New York and my race directors would pick me up and bring me straight somewhere to get IV fluids. I mean, we had so many bizarre things. And so I thought um, two things. I thought someone's got to tell the truth because all the other books I've read them all after I published mine, I went and read them all. Nobody's getting into great detail. They're all like surface level, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And good for them. And some of them are super scary. Mine is a really funny view of cancer in general. It's my experience. And there's, there were a lot of laughs. I tell all the gory to hard details too. I certainly cried in my bathroom or my car alone every day. I mean, it was very, very stressful, but, um, but yeah, I thought two things. I thought uh, I, I could tell about the things nobody else is talking about. Yeah. And then also is, you know, I've made a career out of helping people do better and be better. And in this situation, I could help people endure their cure far better by, you know, pursuing their passions, um, great positivity, and um, perspective. You know, someone always has it worse. And so if you have the opportunity to smile or laugh or do what you love or be with whom you love, I think you should. And from what I've been told so far is this book is really helping other cancer patients thrive while trying to survive. That has to make you feel great. And where can people get the book? Is it on Amazon? It is, it's actually wherever books are sold, okay. but I prefer it when people come to my website, fitness.com. That's F-I-T-Z-N-E-S-S.com. If you use discount code survivor, you get free shipping. I autograph every book. I ship it in these fun pink envelopes with a lot of love. And uh, yeah, I appreciate anyone. Who's that going. is really, really great. And let me ask you this. How did your family handle this while you were going through? That's a big part of, of cancer treatments. So the, the people that surround you and having that support network, how did they handle everything? Yeah. So my husband did, uh, he, he just 
like a soldier. He showed up and he did everything that needed to be done, which I very much appreciated. I, I was fortunate. I couldn't, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a single mom type thing. Um, my daughter who was 16 at the time, very emotionally, you know, I gave her bad news, good news, bad news. I found breast cancer. It, it's positive. Good news. I'm going to survive. It's just, I'm going to look weird, feel bad for a while. The poor girl, she just wailed. I mean, she really struggled at the beginning. And um, my son, my 14 year old son at the time, he just said, mom, I think you're going to look cute bald, um, <laughs> which I really appreciate. Oh, nice. it. Um, yes. But you know what? They kids are very resilient. They had their own special lives to live. And I didn't burden them with the gory details. I never once took them to a scary appointment. And for my family that worked for me, I see a lot of people going to the hospital to do all the stuff with the kids and those needles, that blood is, is really stressful. So I decided no. Um, and quite quickly, it went from tears to making fun of mom's bald head. <laughs> and, you know, I love it. I love it. I love it. And you looked, yeah. as I said, you looked fabulous. I don't know how you did all that, but God bless. So let's move on to yeah. how you're doing today. How do you feel? What are you doing? Where are you with things? So I am one month, one year, one month out of chemo and I am, thank you. I'm feeling great. I've put on much of the weight I lost. I was one of those chronic cancer patients. So I've gained back eight pounds of muscle, which I'm thrilled with. And not only am I healthy because I put in the effort in the, in the gym and, you know, just baby stepping my way back. And I have the great, great benefit of my own fitness expertise to do that. But I just uh, committed a month ago and have been training for the Boston Marathon in October. So I'm going beyond just healthy girl. And I'm, I'm going to athletic, like hard God bless. I'm really excited about that. And I oh, have hair. About it. And you have hair. Oh <laughs> my goodness. That's so great. Well, uh, good luck with that. That's wonderful that you're doing that. And you also do, you do online videos, strength training for runners. You also have something called the weight loss formula. What is that? So the exact formula for weight loss, it's interesting. I mean, uh, Fitness and weight loss has been bastardized by so many snake oil salesmen. My yeah. industry is not necessarily an ethical one. And there's always someone coming in trying to mm -hmm. hawk a diet, a pill, powder, supplement, snake oil of some sort to take people's money and leave them hanging. And so the exact formula for weight loss is really just me teaching you how to eat the right amount of the right foods for the size you want to be. You can create with it your own personalized caloric budget, which actually works. It costs you no money. You give me no money. Um, but if you go to fitness.com on the very cover at the bottom of the page, it's a, it's a big block. It says exact formula for weight loss. If you go there, it will help you achieve your personal weight loss goals with no gimmicks, just learn how to eat healthy food. And, and it it'll is so true. There are so many gimmicks and people always sort of want that quick fix and that, you know, take a pill and you're going to lose 50 pounds. It sort of doesn't work that way. You kind of have to work for it a little bit. <laughs> you know what? Unless, unless you see Oprah running around in those size 10 Calvin Klein jeans again, yeah. that still doesn't exist because if it did, she would have it. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Yeah. You're, you are right. And that's Oprah. So Oprah, yeah. you know, can't do it. <laughs> and what about strength training for runners? I know, you know, running can really eat up a lot of calories and make people very lean, but a right. lot of times, you know, they want to still maintain their muscle. So it's important to have both. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the great obstacles with the running community is runners tend to just run. They get laser focus. And especially when you're training for something like a marathon, it does take off a lot of your time. But if you commit to this very specialized uh, strength training program designed for runners, it will help you run further with greater power, faster with that greater power and pain-free because you will have the structural stability to endure every single one of those very traumatizing steps as you go. And so, you know, runners end up with a lot of weird pains. We know those words called plantar fasciitis, um, uh, IT band syndrome, yes, yep. and knee so issues, that. hip issues. Yeah. yeah you those name are it. words regular people know. Runners know them because runners yeah. are in pain. If runners strength train every other day with this program and commit to a, a vigorous stretching routine, they will eliminate almost all of the pains that burden them and they will go further and faster, which is what we all want sometimes. Right? Absolutely. Well, someone's listening and they either used to run and want to get back into it or, or start a running program. What are, what are the first steps? Do they need to start walking first or get on the treadmill? How do you do it? Yeah. Baby steps. It doesn't matter where you do it on the trail, on the road, on a treadmill, that's your choice. But 
um, start small, the smaller, the better, because once you cross that point of overdoing it and you have that miserable, dis disabling pain, um, debilitating, that's what I was looking for. Yes, yes. Then, then you're, you're, and you're uh, less excited to go back. Yes, hard to get better. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so go out, run for one minute, go home, you know, run for one minute, walk a mile, just start off baby steps. And I promise you this, when I was, when I was going through chemo, I was whacked out of any sort of exercise for four solid months, no gym, no walking, no nothing. I was just a obliterated sick person. I could work and sleep and be a mom. And that was it. And then when I came back, I walked, uh, I walked maybe five houses down and back. I walked down the hill and then I had my husband drive down, pick me up and drive me home. Wow. I never pushed yeah. the limits because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be thrown backwards ever. So if you baby step it, you will only move forward. And man, that feels good. Yes, it does. And let me ask you this too. You know, you're mentioning how, you know, you had to go come back slowly. Do you have a greater appreciation for your health and fitness today? So it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I can say yes. I was always that person though. I am so grateful for life. I've, my mantra used to always be, it's not cancer. And so there was nothing that burdens me. No long line, no traffic jam. All the people that get flustered by traffic jam, I think, are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, there's kids with brain cancer. What, yeah, right. What's yeah. What's wrong with you? That Put it in perspective. Get... Yeah. Yeah. So perspective has always reigned, but now it's even more precious. And uh, yeah, yeah, this cancer thing has uh, solidified who I was. It, there were no, there were no U-turns right now. I just, I just feel great about who I am and what I do. And I'm so grateful for every day. Oh, that's such a beautiful message to share with everyone. And again, what is your website, Fitz? It's Fitzness. So F-I-T-Z-N-E-S-S. -S, and that's not only Fitzness.com, but I'm Fitzness on all the social media channels. And I, I love it when people follow me, but I prefer when they reach out and say hi, because I'd rather have friends than followers. That is so sweet. And again, the book is called My Noisy Cancer Comeback. Okay. Fitz Kohler, you are great. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Robin. Thank you. Oh, bye. Uh, bye. And thank you for being with us for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. We'll see you next time. Until then, please stay safe and keep living well.